So these next few videos will get a little intense because we're going to get into a definitely more advanced concept called composite position tolerancing and then show you the differences between that composite and the two single segments. So this is composite tolerancing. It's where you use one position symbol that applies for two frames. I want to show that the upper segment in composite reads just like a normal position tolerance. You're positioning those features within 0.6 relative to the datums. Now the lower segment is supposed to be a refinement of the upper. So it refines the location between the features. So it controls hole to hole if they're in a pattern, but constrains in rotation only to the datum reference frame. So remember how your datum reference frame constrains your translations and constrains your rotations. So whenever you add datum features in a lower segment of composite, they're only going to constrain in rotation only, which means it controls only the parallelism, the perpendicularity relative to the datums, not location anymore. So top one is location to the datums. The lower one is rotation only, controlling the orientation of the features but still controls location between them. Now the lower one here is not composite, this is just two single segmented frames. So this reads like a normal one, positioned to the datums, and the lower one is also a tighter position to just these datums. So two single segments means location on the top to the datums and location on the bottom to the datums. But when you use composite, it's location to the datums and then rotation orientation only to the lower segment. Another way to explain that is with degrees of freedom. We talked about the six degrees of freedom in unit four quite a bit. Remember, you're constraining X, Y, Z, and U, V, and W when you select these. The trick on the lower one is that whenever you put your datum A, you're unlocking the translational components here. You're not constrained in the Z direction anymore, and you're not constrained in the W translation anymore. So it's only constraining you in the U, V, and the W when you add them in the lower frame. So it's location between the features, but rotation, orientation only. And that's different than two single segments, which will have normal rules apply. It constrains any degree of freedom it possibly can, translations and rotations. All right, let's look at the most common example of composite position to try to bring this home here. So I've got some pretty simple datums on this part here. Back face is A and B. Oh, where's B on this part? Oh, did I leave B off? Oh, there's B. Okay, that's a bad joke. There's not many jokes I can do with geometric tolerancing, so yeah, get the B out of there. Okay, now we got B attached, and then we have C over here. Okay, so these holes, they have two tolerances, and the top one reads just like a normal position tolerance. This would be position within 0.6 to the datums. But sometimes the hole to hole is more important, so we refine that with a tighter 0.2. In the standard, they call that top one the pattern locating tolerance zone framework, or the PLOTS because it locates the pattern to the datum reference frame, and that lower one they call the feature relating tolerance zone framework, because it relates the features to each other, or the Fritz. I don't think anybody cares about the plots and the Fritz names, but that's one's locating to the datums, the other one's locating to each other. And also, it's going to be relative to A, and that's rotation orientation only, so that's controlling the perpendicularity relative to our A plane. Let me show some animations for how this is working. Now I had to make these tolerance zones really big. <laughs> this is not the hole that you're seeing. This is the greatly exaggerated 0.6 tolerance zone. And notice on the top position there, that reads just like a normal position requirement. I draw four cylindrical zones right on the true position, and the axes have to lie within these tolerance zones. But what that also means is one hole could shoot this way, and the other hole could shoot this way, and they could spread apart from each other. But really, I want the hole to hole to be much better. So we're going to add a set of tolerance zones with this point too. So what do those tolerance zones look like? Well, they're going to be four cylinders of point two that are basically located to each other. So look how they have a basic 50 and a basic 35 and of course 90 degrees between them as well. But there's no B and C there, which means they're unlocked in the translational degrees of freedom X and Y and rotation like this. So these tolerance zones can float to the left, to the right, down, up, and even diagonal, and even rotationally as well. It kind of reminds me how perpendicularity floats inside of a position zone. But now you've got four position zones linked together 
that are floating inside of a bigger set of position zones. So I don't care where you place these holes on the part, but make sure they're placed as a group within the point two. So if we think of the effect that that would have on our part, when you have both of these constraints on here, you're saying the holes can really shift around. They could be down here, because I don't really care about where the holes are relative to the edges. They could be up there, they could be down here, they could be anywhere, even rotated on the part, as long as your hole-to-hole -hole pattern is still good to itself. Now what would be a problem is this one. <laughs> So you might still pass the position tolerance of 0.6, they could shift around 0.6 as datums, but you would fail that lower spec because you don't have a good grouping anymore. So top one locates it to the datums, and the lower one is refining the relationship between them. And this is most common on like big panels. You have a big panel, and I said, I want these four holes right here to be located to the datums within 0.2. No way. Look how far away that is. I can't hold those holes 0.2 relative to the datums. Okay, well what I'll do is I'll give you 0.6 to the datums as long as you hold the whole to whole pattern to itself. And that usually works out well because now manufacturing can use a jig and they can put that jig against the wall and their drill just drills those and that keeps them really good to each other. But where that jig is relative to datums is less important. We give them a bigger value. This is your most common form of composite position taunts, just one symbol and then we use maybe a datum A to control perpendicularity. In the next video, I want to show multiple datums that you can use for more complicated references.